I'll be doing replay analysis of this Hurwink. He's playing position 4 and he is 2k MMR. The reason for this analysis is to make sure anybody who plays support can benefit from this. The analysis will not be limited to any certain bracket. Whether you are 2k MMR, 5k or 6k, you're gonna benefit from this because I'll be sharing what I would have done if I were playing this Hurwink. So initially you have wasted so much time in the base. You have like 30 seconds when you have picked your hero, that's called strategy time to decide which items you wanna buy and which heroes you're going to lane against. It's already 40 seconds remaining until the creep spawn and you haven't even reached the bounty rune spawn yet. Initially, don't waste too much time standing in base buying items. Buy your items in strategy time and use this early game window to see what you wanna do. Whether you wanna smoke and place vision to try and get first blood or you wanna go there, block the small camp if you want against a certain matchup or not. Because if you don't do it initially and you try to do all of this you know, placing wards, trying to block small camp when the lane starts already, it's going to be really bad for you. Let's suppose a scenario where you have wasted like, even in this game, you have wasted like how much time? 28 seconds or 48 seconds you have wasted already in this game. And uh, if enemy team is smart or you know, they're playing active, they would just simply smoke, use that 48 seconds that you have wasted Come here, place observer on this cliff of yours, and they can easily get first blood on you. Meanwhile, you're just standing AFK in base. So they're gonna start with, an, with a huge advantage already. So try not to waste early game time. Looking at their draft, let's analyze how we wanna play the lane. It's Phantom Dancer carry, plus support could be either Shaman or Undying. Usually Pudge players are also support, but since they have Undying and Shaman, I'm assuming Pudge will be going core. So it's either Shaman position 5 or Undying position 5. The chances are it's gonna be Undying because Undying is mostly played on 5. But it's fine to play on 4 as well and Shaman can come bottom as well. So if Shaman is coming bottom, we need to know what's our game plan. Peel is a melee carry, he cannot hit Hurwing. Hurwing is gonna have an easier time in the lane. If Shaman comes in lane, it's still good for Hoodwink. Why? Because Shaman has small attack range and Hoodwink has insane attack range. So Shaman will not be able to right click this Hoodwink if he's in a good position. So it's the lane is kind of easy, I would say, unless you are in a really bad position. But if it's Undying, the lane is actually gonna be easier as well. Because Undying is again a melee hero, Hoodwink is not gonna take damage from melee heroes, only decay charges, that's it. But if you're not taking damage after decay, it's all good. So lane is kind of easy for you. But if it's Undying, you have to block the small camp because you're a ranged hero, he's a melee hero. If he stays in the lane, you can just right click damage him and he cannot do anything about it. So only thing he can do is pull the small camp. But if you block the small camp with sentry he will not have much impact in the lane okay you're playing for bounty runes keeping this ward in your inventory when the game starts it's really bad you have to use the observer wards to fight for the bounty runes and get the advantage of it so try not to do this don't hold observer in your inventory now enemy team has also seen this that you have observer in your inventory and there is a chance they can deward this. Now you have time. Everybody is busy here doing random stuff, fighting. You can block the small camp. Because if you don't do it now and you try to do it in the laning stage, there are two things that can happen. One, you're gonna leave your off laner alone and they're gonna bully him so much. And second, you're gonna try to block the small camp and they are gonna bully you. So either way, you're just gonna lose the trade. So instead of walking like this when nobody's around, just block the small camp. Okay, now you're going to block the small camp. But okay, here's the problem. So it's Shaman position 5. You have more range than Shaman. Shaman has less range than Hurwink. Shaman should not be trading attacks with you. Shaman has high physical damage. So there is no way you're going to trade attacks with him. 
the only way you can fight him is using the range advantage so that he is never able to right click you. But all of this is happening because you didn't block the small camp. Now you're confused between fighting him and blocking small camp, which makes you lose the trade and so much HP. Now you're not even able to block. Okay, you did it anyways, but you have lost half of your HP for no reason already in the lane. And then Bristol also had to play some of the lane alone. Maybe it was for 10 seconds, but he took so much damage. Why? Because you were not there. Yeah, so you have already lost half of your HP. Really bad for you. And all of this is happening because you wasted so much time in the base. So one small mistake and look how the laning set starts. This lane should favor you, but somehow they're winning the trades. So in this lane, you just basically want to stay out of their attack range and right click them as much as you can and they can do nothing about it. Here is one more mistake. So when enemy has more number of creeps in the lane and you have less, please watch out for creep aggro. Right now you're standing in creep aggro range that is 500 unit distance from where your hero attacks. So I'll just slow it for you. Here you're hitting PL and your creep is about to die. And of course they have five hero, they have five creeps that are gonna attack you because you're gonna hit enemy hero. You attack him and the creeps aggro to you. You have 336 HP. Notice how much creeps damage you. And this is good. You're zoning out PL. But you can just take a safe path, right? You can do it from this side as well. So the creeps cannot hit you because you have too much attack range. So nobody has hit you. Like not a single hero has hit you and you have lost 100 HP for no reason. So you're not taking care of your health in the lane and your positioning in the lane. Okay, Shaman has unblocked. No, Shaman has not. This is nice. You're using your spells to damage the enemy hero. Again. Shaman should not be able to right click you. You should stay in a safer distance. Okay, here Shaman would have died, but you didn't use anything. So now Shaman is making the same mistake as yours. Enemy has one creep. Shaman is taking damage from four creeps and Bristleback as well. There is no way Shaman can stay here. If you use your Econ Shot right now on Shaman, it's gonna double bounce on him, slow him a lot, and then you can just chase him and kill him. It's free kill for you, but you don't do anything. Even right now, you, you could have bushwhacked and chased him down, but... So the easiest way to look for these good traits is looking at the number of creeps in the lane. If you have more creeps in the lane, there are high chances of you winning the trade. So look for that in the lane. Shaman dies anyways. So right now the situation of the lane is really bad observer war I would say. So right now you have blocked a small camp. It's really good. You guys have got the kill in the lane. That's nice as well. Heart camp is blocked, you have to unblock it somehow. And you have placed observer ward right close to the heart camp. So now if enemy has sentry in the heart camp somewhere, because they have blocked it, they can simply deward this. So this is like really bad. So your job in this lane is to secure Loras on 3 minutes and uh, unblock the heart camp. Why do you want to unblock the hard cam? Because if it's unblocked, you can simply pull it. Bring your creep wave here. Bristle will ba Bristleback will have the enemy wave here. Meanwhile, you can just stack for your Bristleback. Bristleback is a hero that's going to benefit from stacks a lot. So if this guy has stacks, he's going to have 
earlier items and he's gonna be super hard to kill and he's just gonna solo carry you you got Loras nice but you're not emphasizing or like you're not even trying to unblock the hard cam this is really bad usually players are not aware of the advantages they can have by blocking small and unblocking hard as a position 4 try to implement this in your games you know blocking unblocking hard cam and pulling it it's simply gonna benefit you a lot like enemy will not even realize how they're losing the lane they're just simply gonna lose the lane in terms of experience and when you have more levels you're gonna be like you're gonna have easier time in the lane okay really bad spell usage it's really lucky that bristleback survived and he killed both of them you could have used mango or healing lotus on bristleback and egg on short bushwhack so it was like really lucky play it's all from bristle backside there was no input from you so right now the only th good thing that you have done in this lane is block the small cam that's it and take lotus and which is like not giving lotus to enemy you didn't even use lotus so that's i don't know that's weird instead how i would have played the first four minutes of this lane I would have blocked the small. Okay, other thing that you did good was you were using your spells to damage PL, but the bad side was you were taking a lot of damage from the creeps in the lane. So you lost so much health for no reason. And you died for no reason again. Watch out for your health, watch out for your positioning in the lane. There is no way Shaman and PL should be killing Horwing in the lane unless Horwing is in a really bad position. So I was saying. How I would have played this lane would it be uh, block the small camp, unblock the hard camp, buy as many sentries as I want to unblock the hard camp because I need it really bad. Why? Because I want to pull this and I just want to make my bristleback farm the hard camp, farm the lane and I stack this for my bristleback. Simple. But right now you're dead. You're looking at other lanes. Nice. Tipping mid. Shaker doesn't have a bottle. Again, this TP had no value because this guy had no bottle. So if he doesn't have a bottle, why are you even TPing mid when the your wave is already in enemy's tower? There is no way you're gonna dive tower and kill in mid when, when enemy has full HP. So this TP was really bad. Instead, if you don't know what to do, if there's nothing you can do on top, nothing you can do on bottom, nothing you can do in mid, TP to outpost and stack. Simple. Okay, you have put sentry when shaman was around, this is really bad. Try to, when you want to devour, try to do it when enemy heroes are not around. So you have like wasted 50 gold, and now you have to wait for more time to buy a sentry. Okay, over here you have icon short on alt Q already. This I wouldn't recommend in the laning stage because it wastes one of the bounce, right? You have so many trees, you don't really need this icon short on the ground because you already have so many trees to use bushwhack on. Here, if you bushwhack shaman without using this. Okay, anyways, your aircon did two bounces on Shaman anyways. That was really lucky of you. But this alt Q on, on the ground, it's really bad when you have so many trees already. Okay, you're dead again. Which lane to TP? We have to see this. There's nothing on mid. Nothing happening on top, you're walking bottom. Okay, uh, 
not really good TP. Because in this lane, now you have to think about it. How do I want to play the lane? We already know against PL and Shaman, we just want to keep our distance and not get hit by them. But how does my Bristleback like to play the lane? Well, PL and Shaman, they cannot kill Bristleback. That's that's my take. Why? Because either way, like when they're trying to kill him, oh, he has a Vanguard as well. So when they're trying to hit him, he's just gonna turn his back. Shaman, he doesn't have enough HP to survive. He cannot take damage from the Bristleback, Quill Spray, and Bristleback. So if I leave Bristleback alone, it's all good. What I can do right now here is nobody is mid. It's free. I can just TP mid, farm all the experience, and get get my level six fast. That's what you wanna do. And then after on the 7 minute mark, you just wanna take your wisdom rune, that's it. When you know this, that my bristle can lane alone, and that's something you can communicate with your offlaner if you have no idea about this. But if you know this, then you're gonna, you know, do something useful in the lane, in the game. Right now, whatever you're doing, it's really useless. You don't wanna be here, unless you do a really good bushwhack on this tree, and get both of these guys and get shaman killed. But you do, you're not even doing that. So there's no point of you staying in lane. So all of this mid lane experience, it went to waste. <clears throat> Why? Because like nobody took experience of this. You can benefit from this a lot. But make sure your offlaner is okay. You can leave him alone. Now you're dewarding it at seven minutes when the sentry is gonna go off anyways. This is really bad. Again, it's been seven minutes and probably now eight minutes you're not gonna get a single stack. Which is really 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 bad. Don't worry about Bristleback, these guys cannot do anything to him. He is a vanguard and he also wants to get his level 6. He doesn't even want you in the lane. You're only gonna, like, if you wanna be in the lane, make sure you're getting Shaman killed at least. But if you're not doing that, then there's honestly no point staying in the lane. Not talking about every hero, talking about Bristleback right now because he's not key level right now. Enemy team cannot kill him. Unless he's like diving towers and you know, somebody else TPs and kill him. But other than that, these two heroes, they cannot do anything. Well... Okay, it's good, you guys got two kills. But again, your spell casting was really bad. Use your spells slow, take your time, but don't miss them. That's the main thing. There's no like, try not to panic and you know, be overwhelmed when there's something fight happening. Finally, you're taking experience on mid lane. Like you have a good power spike on six. When you have six, you have good burst damage with your ultimate. So that is why I want you to get level six fast. Nice, you've got your 6 now. You could have done this a lot earlier and then, you know, be really useful in the lane and make bully PL out of the lane. But, uh, it's fine, you're doing it now. Arcan Ruin. <clears throat> 10 minutes and not a single stack in a game where your offliner actually wants stacks. Just a, just a reminder. So in this game, how you wanna play mid game? Let's see. Uh, this guy on Shaker, he needs his blink to be active on the map, right? So you're gonna wait for his blink and run around the map with him. That's one thing. If you wanna play with top lane, uh, top lane it's really hard to get a kill because Undying has a lot of HP and Clock was he has also a lot of damage plus HP. 
So if any if top lane enemy team is diving your tower, then you can DP and help your teammates. Otherwise, I don't think you're gonna get any value on top lane. Mid lane, I told you you're just gonna be roaming with him when he has blink. But when you talk about bottom lane, so Bristleback, he's unkillable, right? Against a PL and Shaman. So what you wanna do is you just wanna stack for him. Like you're not even required in any single lane. I'm not flaming you or anything, I'm just telling you how your hero works according to your draft. So what you wanna do is you just keep on a stack for your teammates and secure power rounds. That's the best thing you can do in your game. This was really bad spell usage, like this guy is a pudge, 1300 HP, he is in his tower, he has so many creeps there, you're using both of your spells on him. Uh, could be anything, maybe you're trying to zone him out, maybe you're trying to scare him, but this is really useless. The reason is, you're taking damage from tower, there is no way this shaker can dive and kill this guy, and your spells are just going on cooldown, and this pudge guy, he's not even gonna take enough damage from your spells. So right now, this pudge knows you don't have this these two spells for 10 seconds. Enemy can simply gank you. And this, the, the spell casting, it made no sense at all. Like what was the purpose behind these spells? When you think about it, you'll get your answer. Instead, you just want to save them for if enemy comes, you can stop them with your spells and run away. So it is nice that you're trying to zone out the tower with siege creep. Siege creep does a lot of damage to tower. But since our shaker is a melee hero, and uh, for melee heroes, it's really hard to go back when they're hitting tower. Look at the minimap. It's undying teeping middle, right? Of course, if he's teeping somewhere, he's gonna be teeping middle because you're taking tower. So you need to see the map as well. And based on that, you have to make your decisions. If this shaker doesn't know what's happening, you as a support need to keep an eye on the map. So it's undying TP teeping mid, but is already mid. And other PL is dead and you don't have any information on Clockwork or Shaman. So there is no way you guys are staying over here, you just need to go back because everybody is missing and the one guy you can see he's sleeping. But you guys just stay there and uh, and yeah they do end up coming and you will die. It's fine Shikri is dead, you can just get away from here. Clock also kills you. Let's see what you wanna do next. Okay, after you have respawned, you have instantly TP mid because they were trying to hit your Bissell back, but you have lost your mid tower. So when you have lost your mid tower and enemy is going back, there is no point to stay mid right. But I have noticed that this is a really, really, really common mistake which is happening in almost 90% of the games where people just cluelessly stand mid for no reason. So now look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 of your heroes are standing mid. For what? For these 3 creeps? There is no power rune. So there is no point. And you are just roaming around. Meanwhile, if you have no idea what to do right now, buy a smoke, buy some observer wards, Look at the map, there is just there's just one ward from you. Instead buy a smoke, smoke with your team, place wards on the map. Like Shaker has blink, he has echo slam. But how is he gonna gank when his support is not even smoking him to somewhere? You have to smoke the Shaker and of course other heroes as well and make him move on the map. It's not like he's gonna understand this on his own or he's gonna just somehow walk and you know set up the fight for you. You have to smoke him so that he can do something with this blink dagger. So instead of wasting so much time as 5 heroes in mid, just smoke up, place Vyan. This PL dies. If you if you guys are smoked and moving bottom to place Vyan instead of 5 heroes showing mid, this PL just dies here with Echo Slam. Why is he not dying? Because You, as a support, are not making your team move on the map. Okay, so... 
for the last one minute you're just randomly run, running around mid and literally random fight there is no objective behind this fight so basically enemy team started this fight and every fight basically has a purpose either enemy wants to kill you and take Roche or they wanna kill you and convert that kill into an objective but right now if they, even if they kill you guys on mid lane there is no objective because there is no tier 1 so even if they kill you they're gonna achieve nothing so this, so this is a really really bad fight from enemy team bad fight I would say in a sense like even if they kill you all it's good they're gonna get some lead but there is no objective they're gonna get so Dora is not all about killing Meanwhile, you guys are just reacting to their plays, and if you're being lucky, you're just gonna win the fight, which you, I guess, did. This fight, you also had no impact. And you're just basically winning the fight based on luck. Because enemy team is really bad, they're taking really bad fights for no reason. And they're dying. So that's basically not how Dora is played. If you wanna become a better player, understand what you wanna do in the game. You don't wanna react to enemies bad plays all the time or enemies good plays all the time you wanna make your own moves you wanna play the game or you wanna make enemy play the game how you want them to play and how you wanna play it so good thing would have been to smoke and play some vision on the map so your team can see something but, well good for you you guys wanna fight without doing anything so in this game how we basically want to reach mid game we want to reach to a point where Bristleback has so many items that nobody can kill him and he's just super tanky standing in front for you all. Meanwhile, you're all just standing behind using your spells on him. That's how this game should go. Meanwhile, look at enemy's draft. How does it work? Who is going to kill Bristleback? I don't see a single hero that can kill Bristleback in this game. Unless Shaman hits level 20 and he gets talent of Hex Break. And then you know he is able to hex bristle back and kill him with peel that's like super 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 late game thing but i don't think the game is go gonna go to that point but if it does you're always there to cancel this stuff okay. again you're dying randomly and why are we dying because you're standing here, there is no vision of the wave. Okay, you placed ward, just use your scurry and go back from this side. Take a safer path. You're running in to enemy heroes, in front of enemy heroes. Okay, we can say in a way like this dazzle will save you with grave, it's super nice. Just use your sharpshooter and get out of dogs, so, super easy. See, both the supports are dying even before the fight even started. This is really bad. As a support, you don't want to reveal your position, which you did literally the very first second. You're walking here in front of enemy heroes. Never ever show yourself on the map. I know taking this path is really hard because, you know, it's a long path. But you ha need to have discipline in your game and realize that this path is going to win you the game. Meanwhile, this path is going to make you lose the team fight and lose you the game. So it's it's fine to take extra 10 steps to win the game. So the reason why these two deaths are not looking super bad is because Bristleback is... He has like magical damage, immunity... Physical damage immunity reduction, I mean. And their drafter just cannot kill Bristleback. That is why. Otherwise, if there was some other hero, these two deaths would have been super bad. An enemy can simply snowball by killing your supports. But right now, Bristle is just unkillable. And uh, not unkillable, but like super hard to kill, I would say. He ends up dying. And the reason for his death was because nobody is hitting Tombstone. And you're the ranged hero. Your job in the fight is when everything is happening, like everybody's fighting on their own, you just take 
the tombstone down because you're a ranged hero and nobody's gonna pay enough attention to you when your bristleback and other heroes are on top of each other. So far, the only good thing that I liked about this game is your sp the way you were using your spells in the lane to damage enemy heroes. I had farming, pushing side lanes. See, now is the right time. So this is where support should realize when to farm and when to stick with your allies. So you're gonna stick with your allies with a smoke, with an observer ward, with his echo slam, not on cooldown, with the, when echo slam is up. That's when you wanna stick. But when the echo slam is on cooldown, the big team fight ability, and other heroes they just wanna farm as well, you as a support you're gonna farm as well. So right now you're farming top, this is good. Okay, you can use sharpshooter and get out of this cog again, but you're not doing it. But anyways, you shouldn't have died here and this was like really nice. Like the farming that you were doing, it's really nice. So every game there is a window for your support to farm, but they're not able to see it. So you're only gonna farm when your teammates are farming as well. When team is ready to fight, smoke with them and take a fight. If they don't know they're ready to fight, but you know that they are ready to fight, which is Echo Slam and Blink is available, smoke them. If you smoke them, they will move with you on the map. Again, massive positioning issue from you. This spell scary, it when you activate it, it gives you on level 3 it, it is giving you 150 attack range and cast range. So there is no point for you to stay in such an open spot. Where a shaman without blink can walk and shackle you. It is, this just shows that if this guy can walk and shackle you, <clears throat> it shows how bad of a positioning you have. Good positioning would have been somewhere around here. Where enemy cannot reach you. To make it simple for you to understand the whole mid game and late game thing. You need to understand the draft. You're gonna understand this when you're gonna start doing some thinking on your own, some logical thinking about can Pudge do something to my cores in the late game? Well yes Pudge is a strong core hero and Pudge is also really hard to kill but not as strong as Bristleback and Pudge doesn't do much to Bristleback. Clockwork same thing, Undying same thing, Shaman same thing, PL same thing, nobody can kill Bristleback. So if you know about this you're gonna be really relaxed that my bristle he is not gonna die easily when he has a lot of items. How is he gonna have a lot of items? Well if you guys stop dying randomly and if you guys take good team fights. How are you guys gonna stop dying randomly? Well if you're playing in your vision and you're not the one dying first then there is no way bristle back is gonna die because if they're going on bristle you can just stun them with pushback and do a lot of damage with sharpshooter as well. So all of this comes down to you again. If you're not dying, Bristle is not gonna die in the early game. And when Bristle has items, and of course he's gonna get items when you're stacking more, then Bristle is just gonna simply carry you the game. You're gonna carry the Bristle back by not feeding, by not dying first, by stacking for him. And he's gonna carry you by farming the stacks and relying on you that you're gonna save him from Shackle and Hex in team fights. So you just want to reach to a point where Bristleback is super super strong. You can TP bottom right now and take all the farm. Because your cores are dead anyways. So in this game, for the mid game to late game part, you just keep one of farm. Like just keep farming when your cores are not around to farm. And when they're not willing to fight, just keep farm, 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 farm. Right now see? They have 26 kills, you have 15 kills, they have 5k net worth, but I am sure if this Bristleback, he gets his items, he's not gonna die, and eventually enemy team is gonna throw, because they're also not thinking about how they're gonna deal with Bristleback. So 
if you're the one actively thinking about stuff in the game, you're gonna have more advantage than enemy already. The mid game plan that I was telling you about, always fight under vision. Farm when your team is not looking to fight and fight when your cores are ready to fight. Don't farm when your cores are willing to fight. Delay the game to the point when your cores are ready to fight. The best way to delay the game is by pushing side lanes. If side lanes are always pushed, the enemy team can never end the game from one lane. Suppose if they are doing so, you can simply use cliff to kill the wave that's hitting tower and cut the wave from behind. Backdoor protection will be applied on the tower and the enemy team will be in a choke point where they wouldn't know what to do. And in that moment, you can kill them one by one. When you push side lanes, it forces the enemy to teleport back to their base to push the lane again and it delays the game. It's daytime, I would recommend you guys to play on the bottom side because in daytime Roshan is bottom, nighttime Roshan is top. So if it's daytime, keep the bottom lane pushed. If it's nighttime, keep the top lane pushed priority. And yes, play for power zones if you can. It spawns every two minutes. Try to take them because it just gives an unfair advantage to enemy team if they have the power run. We have talked about how you want to take the team fight already. Your main purpose in team fight is to make sure shaman is not able to keep one guy shackled for so long. So every time shaman is gonna shackle somebody, you're just gonna keep your bushwhack to cancel his shackle. Other than that, you just wanna keep your distance and make sure nobody can ever get close to you. And if clockwork hook shots you, just use your sharpshooter and get out of cogs. And other than that, there's no way enemy team can kill you. So you have like insane amount of deaths too. 9 deaths in 26 minutes as a, in a game where your hero should not be killable. And all of this should be fixed with positioning. You should know where to put your hero in the right place. So here's going to be a team fight which you played nicely. So see Shaman, he is in a really bad spot. So he is doing what you were doing in the top fight. He is standing in middle of multiple heroes of yours and he is not covered by anybody, any of his support. So he is just you know doing YOLO random team fight without thinking. Meanwhile you have a really good position. So if he shackles and you bushwhack this is really nice. Ultimate Shaman is dead. It's already 5v4. Why? Because Shaman is making a huge mistake of showing in middle of a team fight. Meanwhile you are having a really good position. Really small thing but look at the favor it's giving you 4 versus 5 already tombstone you just need to get out because you cannot simply stand and take and don't do damage tombstone already okay it's fine you're out you need to not worry about bristleback because he's not gonna be easy to kill okay really bad spell usage you're missing bushwhack and again using air short randomly Make sure when you want to use a short, it can bounce on heroes so it can give impact. Okay, this is a really good bushwhack. See, <clears throat> when you are playing calmly and you know not rushing things, you have more impact. But just don't overwhelm yourself with so much stuff. Your job, like you have simple one job in team fight, or I would say two jobs. One, if clockwork jumps on you, <clears throat> use your sharpshooter and get out. Second, be calm and bushwhack multiple heroes if you can or bushwhack shaman. That's it. There is no need to rush about it or rush anything because if you rush, you're gonna miss your spells. And if you miss your spells, then of course the entire fight is gonna be based on luck. By luck, I mean it's not gonna be in your hands. Okay, hitting bushwhacks, that's nice, it's fine, you died, you got killed on him. So, all in all, it was a decent fight with one bushwhack missed, which could have cost you the team fight. So, make sure to use your spells properly in a team fight. About itemization, yes, <clears throat> Gleipnir is good against PL to catch him. Other than that, if you wanna make four staff, it would be nice as well to make sure 
your you can get your shaker and dazzle out of cogs because you can easily get out of cogs with sharpshooter here is another team file example where they're going on bristleback but of course they cannot burst him so you just need to be patient and use your spells properly here acorn butch bushwhack and good bounces and shaman die this is really nice ultimate really good see right now i like your position a lot in this team fight because you know they just cannot go on you like this if you have such positioning but make sure not to forget about this thing if you have good position kind try to maintain it don't lose it in middle of team fight see right now this is really bad position positioning from you bristleback is going back meanwhile you're going into them as a hoodwink you want to stay behind bristle not front like this so you're again roaming around in front line and get hooked really really bad use bushwhack and saved by dazzle and at this point it's what it feels whatever because bristleback is so strong but uh, these moves they're really game costing because bristleback is not going to die in a team fight and the only way he dies is if all of you you dazzle shaker and Ricky, you die and then enemy can you know then try to fight bristle and somehow kill him that's the only way but if you are alive there is no way bristle can die so you basically want to stay alive for bristle in the team fight don't throw away your life like this by just going so front see you just died now let's th so this guy has made a silver edge now there is a way they can build bristle back a really good echo now think of a scenario where you were alive this PL would be dead see it was a really small thing so let's zoom you didn't go front like this you did, didn't take so much damage and you're alive and you're somehow in a safe position right now in this game safe position would have been over here where snakes are not seeing you and you're just hiding in trees so we're assuming that you're alive and enemies fighting bristleback you have bushwhack now this guy stunned stunned you bushwhack him right now he's dead but because you're you're dead that makes PL stay longer in a team fight and uh, well nothing really happens but PL would have been dead game would have been completely different from there and the mistake was one simple you were going front so you need to understand the purpose of your hero and play accordingly as a support you just don't want to die first because the longer you stay in a team fight the more impact you will have well there's another fight where you can use okay you missed your spells again This team fight would have been completely different if your spells were hitting properly. Just don't panic, dude. That's what I would say. Your hero is already in a safe position and there is no way they can go on you. I'll just show it to you again. Here, when they go on Dazzle, you can cancel this ultimate by Bushwhack on Pudge you don't do it because of that Dazzle just doesn't live and right now here if you use Acorn when Shaman came in on not on the ground but on Shaman Shaman can literally die with so much bounces and you know the and also this Gleipnir usage on one hero it's super super bad you can use basically you can use Gleipnir over here use acorn bushwhack on three heroes it's gg like fight is over single handedly you're gonna win the game for your team but all your spell casting it's just and this bushwhack it didn't catch anybody so it's simple i mean it's not simple but if you think about it it feels really really easy that 
if you're staying calm in a team fight and you're hitting all your spells properly you can single-handedly win team fight to your teammates so that is how basically a support can carry a game in the end you ended up winning this game it's really nice you had your moments as well where you were connecting your spells and had impact in team fights but you had massive chances of solo carrying this game in team fights that you missed and the problem was you were not in good position or if you were in good position you were missing your spells or you started off really good in a team fight but you ended up in a really bad position so never ever lose focus in a team fight i know when so many things are happening we get overwhelmed but you need to stay focused and uh, if you are not dying first in a team fight you will somehow give more impact don't die first in a team fight and try to not miss your spells you're only gonna miss your spells when you're gonna rush them just stay calm and think about how i wanna use my spells if we talk about the laning stage you need to think about your matchups and how you wanna play them try not to waste early game time try to be there with your core in the first wave because when you are going to block the small camp during the laning stage your core has to lane alone and that is really really bad enemy if they're good they're gonna punish that so much so try to block do this blocking unblocking before the game starts i mean before the creep spawn and um, while trading in lane make sure to keep an eye on the number of creeps if you have more creeps you will win the trade but if enemy has more creeps try to keep an eye on the creep aggro thing don't take creep aggro and don't take a lot of damage <clears throat> in this in this game enemy didn't even do much to you like not enough zoning but so much damage you took from the creeps for no reason that's one thing try to understand your draft how it works and uh, like if you want to play for the early game or the late game enemy draft is really good for the early game because bristol needed some time to get his items uh, meanwhile your draft it's like super strong there's nothing enemy can do about your draft in the late game so when you know this information you're not going to lose hope and you're not going to take random fights in the mid game instead you're just going to play for the late game and when you know this information that we're going for the late game you will not feed on the map you will not take extra useless fights on the map you will keep the side lanes pushed and try to extend the game to the late game it's really hard to understand initially which side is a draft favoring but you're go only gonna improve in this when you're gonna actively think about this every game when you're actively thinking about it your brain is just gonna learn how to do it it's, it's gonna be on, on your autopilot but initially you will have to think about these things Supports basically set up the pace of the early game for teams. So if you wanna not be useless in a game, I would suggest you to keep an eye on the timers. This clock, three minutes secure Lotus for your core. If you wanna stack for your core, who cannot die in a lane, start stacking after the Lotus pool. Play for every power run that is six minute, eight minute, ten, twelve every two minutes, and uh, try not to die first in a team fight. If you're looking to improve your game understanding in any role, I offer private coaching sessions which can help you improve your skills and achieve high rank just as they have for my previous students. If you're interested, you can join my discord linked in description. Please make sure to subscribe and like the video. Do let me know if you have any feedback, otherwise good luck with your games and have a nice day.